Hello everyone and welcome back to The Great Book of Grudges. My name is Nathan and today we're going to talk about the Dogs of War. Not an army speculation or a character speculation that's been done to death, but I do have reason to believe that Creative Assembly might be gearing up for it. This is for a number of reasons like a previous leak and also with recent information on what's coming in patch 5.3. One thing that Creative Assembly likes to do is prepare things way in advance and sometimes showcase some mechanics through other mediums, if it not very similar. It also makes a lot of sense to do a Dogs of War DLC because it is the last remaining army book. After that it's pretty much done so yeah let's talk about a few things. But before anything a big thank you to our sponsor Instant Gaming, a platform where you'll be able to purchase games at discounted prices, even newly released ones. Gaming is rather expensive lately and yeah it's just better to have a discount coming in whenever possible. For example I just recently bought Worshippers of Cthulhu because I like those city town builder stuff and I mean you know, HP Lovecraft is cool. But hey, that's not your type of thing. Just give it a search. There's a lot of different titles on sale right now. Not only that, but we do have a monthly giveaway going on, which is win a game of your choice. You don't have to make a purchase. You just have to sign up, click participate, and there you go. It's a nice little rolling thing that we've been going on for a few months now. It's a service that I also use myself. And to be honest, it's nice to have a consistent sponsor that I know they do everything that they advertise, which believe me, there's a lot of potential sponsors that do reach out to content creators and they sound scummy as hell which is why I don't take them. But let's return to our regularly scheduled programming. So you might remember last year around the same time as Shadows of Change there was some files found within the DB. This was for Borgio the Besieger and Lucarezia Belladonna, two characters that are attached to the whole Talia section of the Dogs of War. Lucarezia is found in around the Estalia region, but that's actually part of Talia. Those were inputs by Creative Assembly themselves, which means that yes, they were flirting with the idea of a potential Dogs of War DLC. That doesn't mean that it's going to happen, by the way, it's just in some cases stuff does end up being made and never approved or they just decide to scrap. I'm not saying that it's been scrapped now, I still think that it's coming but maybe later down the line. One thing of interest here as you might notice DLC number 22 is where it's attached to. This is what ultimately became you know the changeling, cockatrice and so on. What's really important to note here is that DLCs do get shifted around a lot which is why you can see conflicting stuff here and there. Uh, it's something that we've already known because a Sinesh DLC was going to come after Thrones of Decay and that was delayed or put on ice, we don't know, I'm just hoping it's delayed. Another thing of note here is usually when stuff is in the database even left there by accident it means that a decent amount of work has been done on it. Meaning, for example, Demonetization Maneater, the character who's coming for the Ogre Kingdoms in the next DLC, See, it was shortly after Thrones of Decay that people discovered his rig, a basic textualist model, and even some DB entries. When this happens, it's actually because Creative Assembly work on a bigger build and then it gets fragmented to be the next DLC or whatever that goes into live. They've got something which is likely a decent amount ahead of us already, depending on the various stages of development. This is why stuff gets left in, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's coming anytime soon. A perfect example of this would be when Warhammer 3 first released. Literally within a day, people found the files for the Immortal Empires, the map and so on, right? But we didn't get that until six months later. Same thing with Pharaoh. Within a day, people found the map files for the Dynasties edition and that took like a year. So just because we saw this last year doesn't mean that it's coming anytime soon and obviously since they have remade the roadmap, which well they haven't even posted a roadmap but you know what I mean, it could be that the potential Dogs of War DLC has been moved back ever so slightly or even further down the line. Now I was perfectly content waiting for the Dogs of War, however recent news makes me think that they might be a little closer than we think. Because we've just recently had some news on patch 5.3 regarding some changes. The first thing is the Mercenary Recruitment rework, which is a little bit more similar to that of Warhammer 2 section, but it has changed a little bit too. Uh, you can see that on screen right now, where it's increased the caps to 3, they replenish more, uh, the quality of mercenaries depends on the specific camp, and there's some new units, stuff that you already had access to from Warhammer 2 and some new stuff being added in. 
it's really interesting to see a mercenary recruitment system being updated uh, to be a bit more in line with the new game. But not only that, the ogres are the minor section there when it comes to recruitment and mercenaries. If they're doing some work on this, it means that it's likely going to be used again in one way, shape or form. Not so much in the identical way, uh, because we've had similar mechanics pop up every now and then, but just maybe changed ever so slightly. The next thing is also the system of bounties. They've created something rather than just going, okay, yeah, this is the contract system. This looks like it's just going to be more consistent. Obviously, we'll be able to tell a lot more when this patch does eventually come out, whenever the hell it does. It does feel like Creative Assembly are waiting to the very last moment of this month. But stuff like bounties and mercenary recruitment would be translated very easily into a Dogs of War army, and I think that they'd probably be thinking the same way. In fact, when it comes to this bounty system and the mercenary recruitment, depending on how much budget they do have, I could also imagine it being translated for a one-to-one. -one. Because these mechanics would be considered secondary or even tertiary to the faction overall. The thing that makes the Ogre so interesting is the camp system, and obviously, you know, the big roster, the meat stuff, and then obviously just how they play overall compared to the mercenaries. The mercenaries is stuff that you're going to be using with other factions. The bounties, yeah could be a main thing but we still have to wait to see how it works because I'm still seeing here you know eliminate the following character and stuff like that which was an issue when it came to the original form of the contract system as yeah those characters would die before you could even get to them it's just how it works there is another little bit of a note there have been some very slight whispers of more dogs of war stuff potentially coming for Warhammer the Old World in the future where originally, this is something very, very important to note, Games Workshop did say in the Warhammer Fest Q&A session that there was no plans for Dogs of War. Then every now and then we have been seeing a Dogs of War style unit in each of the Arcane Journals, not all of them though. And yeah, they have said that they've increased the scope of the game. So likely it's the whole thing of the rumors of Games Workshop's working on one thing, Creative Assembly's working on another, and it slowly ties in. It's a big reason, say for example, with the Dwarfs and Thrones of Decay. You might have noticed in Thrones of Decay there were a lot of Slayer stuff coming back, Doomseekers, and obviously the Goblin Hewer. Magically, around the same time, that book for the Dwarfs came out with the Arcane Journal, and... Oh look! There's the same things. A little bit different when it comes to Doomseekers, as they're more treated as secondary characters, well, tertiary, actually. But, yeah, very, very curious. It's happened a few times with the Arcane Journals, by the way. It could mean that we could end up with an Arcane Journal with Dogs of War, for example. But that's, well, we have to wait and see. Uh, they're very faint rumors, so I don't know exactly if they're true or not just yet. Or better yet said if they could be believed. But the thing is, when these rumors start out of nowhere, and sometimes they come from a pretty good spot, it's just a matter of time. The big question now is when could we see a Dogs of War DLC, and that becomes a bit harder to kind of guess, mostly because their schedule has obviously been reworked, which is why we're getting a Corn DLC before the Sunesh one, and who knows what else has been worked around. We know that CA Sophia is coming into play, but we don't know exactly how much CA Sophia is coming to help. I'm hoping a fair chunk of them, because if we have to wait for the Corn DLC to come out later this year, and then a pretty good educated guess would say the Sunesh DLC. DLC is after, then we'd have to wait for the Dogs of War maybe after that? Which doesn't sound too bad, you know, two DLCs and stuff, but, you know, DLCs coming around every eight months right now, which isn't great. Sure, there was a lot of spanners in the works, but hopefully CA Sophia makes it go a little bit faster, because it's not good for everyone. I know people are getting bored with Total War Warhammer right now. It's very obvious, and yeah, it's not your fault, you know, at the end of the day, it's just how things are going. When content isn't releasing at a schedule that people are expecting, they're going to start looking towards other franchises to play to keep them entertained. But let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Let's start a bit of a discussion. I do apologize that the video is quite short. I normally like doing a bit longer videos when it comes to sponsored posts and stuff, but I do have to keep up with the contract and I'm just not feeling great right now. It's very obvious with my voice. Uh, I've been hit with a flu, you know, perfect time, right up to spooky weekend and... Yeah, great. But I do have some cool stuff planned for next week. Some of it is already recorded, so thankfully we should be fine in terms of content candidates, depending on how bad this flu ends up being. 
that being said, thank you guys for watching and thanks again to Instant Gaming for the sponsorship. There has been a content drought lately, as you guys know, so I really do appreciate them stepping in to help out every now and then. See you guys. Have a great one.